Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be doing a monthly favorites video. I'm gonna to try to do these throughout this year just so that you can stay up to date on the things that I'm currently loving. Cause I'm gonna be testing out a lot of stuff this year. I wanna be trying new makeup when it comes out and doing a ton of full face videos. So you guys are probably gonna be seeing a lot of favorites videos for me this year. Don't hold me to it cause I am um, absolutely terrible at it, but I'm gonna to try to remember and do my best. And I'm gonna do one this month because I do have some products that I've really been reaching for a lot more than others. And you know, a lot of lifestyle-y favorites in this too, that aren't necessarily makeup. Let's just jump into it. I'm actually gonna be doing a clothing try on haul again with ThreadUp in this video. So this portion of the video is actually sponsored by ThreadUp. So if you guys don't know about ThreadUp, they are an online thrifting company. So instead of going to the thrift store to kind of look through the racks and see if you find something, they've got it all laid out for you on their website. One of my favorite parts about ThreadUp is that you can customize the search completely. So you can tell it your size, the color you're looking for, the brand you want, the type of clothing item you're looking for, and it will only show you what's under under the search and what fits that criteria. It also lets you know the condition of the clothing. So it'll let you know if it's like gently used or if there's any pilling or anything like that on it. Everything I've ever gotten from ThreadUp feels brand new. I don't feel like any of the clothes even look like they've been pre-worn. There are a lot of things on the website too that I have gotten new with tags. It comes in really cute polka dot packaging and it just looks really nice and it's presented to you really well. You also get a obviously pretty discounted price from the original because it is secondhand. This one from Studio is cute and I feel like it fits me actually pretty nice. This is a size large. It's not too tight, but it is body conforming. So it's not something that I'm gonna slip on every single day unless I'm feeling particularly incredibly comfortable with my body. Estimated retail price on this was $30. I got it for $10.99. I do like it though. And it has that little detail at the top, which is cute. This sweater is from Old Navy. It is a pullover. It is a size extra large and estimated retail price is $33. I got it from ThreadUp for $14.99. This one I feel like is the perfect comfy, cozy, loungy sweater for me. I didn't only want to get like fashion pieces, I wanted to get also some items that just like to wear comfortably to the store because I'm about comfort. I like cute too, but the reality of the situation is that I wear comfortable clothes a lot more than I wear for fashion. This other one that I got is from Coupio. And this one estimated retail price is 45. I got it for $12.99 from ThreadUp. This one is really tight on me as well. This is size large, but it's not so tight that it's something that I wouldn't wear. I just feel like, again, it's pretty body con on me. It's cute and I would wear it with like a cute pair of high-waisted jeans or just like any sort of pants in general and I feel like it would work. But again, I feel like I could have gone with an extra large. I'm trying to lie to myself at this point. I gained a little bit of holiday weight and I've lost about half of it that I gained, but you know, you know, we're doing our best here. This one is from Forever 21. Estimated retail price was $20. I got it for $11.99 on ThreadUp. This is a size large and I live for this sweater. This is honestly so comfortable. It's kind of like a greeny gray fabric. It's something different. I could see myself wearing this like literally every day of my life. This sweater is also from Forever 21. This is a pullover sweater. This was estimated retail price, $20. I got it for $13.99. Nice and thick, it feels nice and like Sturdy. Doesn't feel like Forever 21. Yes, I'm stocking up on my black long sleeve clothing. This skirt, I could definitely use to extend this right here. No lie, this skirt fits me like a friggin' glove. I got a tiny little butt, okay? I really don't want to talk about it. I love this skirt. I don't even remember ordering this. Did I order this? Yeah, Zara Basic Casual Skirt XL. Estimated retail price on this one was $36. I got it for $15.99. And you know what? If I drop about 10 pounds, which I could use to do to get back to where I was, this skirt, oh my God, I love it. I'm gonna be wearing this all summer. This skirt is from DKNY and it hugs my my butt nice too. I mean, what there is of my butt. It's stretchy, so it's a lot more comfortable than the last skirt with like a long sweater or something. I don't know. What do you guys think? Estimated retail price on that skirt is $179 and I got it for $36.99. These jeans are like boyfriend jeans from Old Navy. They're size 12, but the thing is, because I don't have a butt or much of a butt, boyfriend jeans just look a little dumpy on my butt. Maybe if I wore heels. What do you guys think? Tell me if you know how to style boyfriend jeans. 
These jeans are from Old Navy and they are estimated retail price of 35 and I got them for $12.99. ThreadUp is offering my viewers 30% off of your first order. Just click the link in the description of this video if you guys wanted to do that. Thank you again so much to ThreadUp for sponsoring this portion of the video and now let's jump into my favorites of January. If you guys are interested in seeing this makeup look in action, this was from my full face of Charlotte Tilbury makeup. I was testing out the makeup and I feel absolutely stunning in it, so sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I will have it linked up here if you guys want to go watch that video, but let's just jump into this month. And I'm gonna start off with some products that I've talked to you guys about before, but I wanna talk to you guys about them again. So I did a video, God, I'm linking a ton of videos up here, but this was my skincare routine. And I had started doing this for a couple of weeks and I am hooked on this skincare routine. I cannot help it. <laughs> I've had this for like six months, maybe a little less, and I never really got into it initially as much as I am now, and that is the Face Halo. So if you guys don't know what this is, mine's a little bit dirty, I did wash it, but you know, it stains a little bit. Face Halo is a microfiber cleansing cloth, and so if you guys have ever seen like the makeup eraser before, that's what I used to use. I like this now because I just feel like it's, I don't know, I just, I just like it. I like it a lot because it's just like a tiny little guy, you just go in with it. This is a makeup remover that you don't need to use any makeup remover on. Basically, the way that the fibers are, it clings onto the makeup, it sucks it right out of your pores. It honestly gets all of your makeup off with very minimal scrubbing. You're not like really yanking on your face at all. You wet this, you remove your makeup with it, and that is that. It's an awesome product. I think this is Chloe Morello's brand. Am I wrong? I really like Face Halo. I bought these myself, obviously. They are such a lovely product. I have found that I just, I was going through so much makeup remover and it was annoying the shit out of me constantly how much makeup remover I had to go through. But what I discovered is if I use water on a face halo, remove all of my makeup, get it all off my face, then I go in and I cleanse, that gets off everything I need. What I like to do sometimes too is I like to take the face halo and I like to put some bioderma on it. I like the Sensabio H2O. This is a micellar cleansing water. It does not burn your eyes. I don't find this breaks me out at all. In fact, when I use this in conjunction with all the other skincare stuff I'm about to talk about, I just feel like all of my makeup comes out of my pores. It feels so clean after this cleanse. I just love the way that my skin has been working. So I take the face halo, I use it, and then I take a little bit of the Bioderma, put it on there, and I feel like that just gets the very remaining last bits off, and then I go in with my next cleanser. Both of these products are so fantastic. You do not need a makeup remover with this. You don't have to put any on it. You just use water, and by some odd magic, Magic, this little thing gets all the makeup out of your pores. And you know what? I'm not questioning it. The cleanser that I've been using after is the Clinique Foaming Facial Soap. I think this is like a sample size or like a deluxe sample size, but you need very little of this. I mean, just a dot on the tip of your finger, it foams up a lot. I don't know if this has great skincare ingredients in it, but it has not broken me out, which is why I'm using this. Will I repurchase this? I think I would. It's not to say that I think that this is like an absolutely unbelievable standalone cleanser. I just feel like for me it doesn't have a scent to it it just feels like a cleanser it does make my skin feel tight which leads me to believe that it is drying my skin out but when I put these next products on it that brings all the hydration back I really like this product a lot and it ended up in my favorites because I've been using it every day for like the last month and a half and I feel like I haven't broken out at all it's just been really nice to make me feel like I'm cleansing my skin I've been trying the 60 second cleansing method and I do feel like that dries up my skin a little bit more I really Really, really think that this cleans the shit out of my pores and I haven't had any issues at all since using it you know I have very sensitive skin and I if I use a product that is like reacting with my skin I will break out immediately so this I have not at all and now that I have been doing this skincare routine I feel like it's been such a helper in making my skin just feel more balanced overall so the next product that I go in with after I wash my skin is the Tatcha the essence it says here is a plumping skin softener 98 0.7% Harasai 3 anti-aging complex. It says here, the Tatcha Essence, a concentration of pure micronutrients, softens and plumps skin with deep hydration while maximizing the performance of Tatcha skincare ritual. I have been using it and it does feel like a really nice step before I go in with my water cream moisturizer, which is what I've been doing. Do I know if this is what's helping my skin or if it's a combination of everything? No, but I have been liking this. It is very, very mild scented. It is very liquidy. It's like a water consistency on the inside. You just pour
pour a little bit of it into your hand and then just pat it onto your skin. I like to do that and then kind of wave off my skin and then I go in with the water cream, which is what I'm gonna show you next. I'm just really liking this. My bottle's probably, I've been using it for about a month and a half every day. My bottle's probably down about this much. So I feel like this would last a while. I feel like it's a nice product. Now, if I quit using it, would I notice a difference? I don't know, I don't know if I would, but you know what? I don't wanna even test that because so far I'm really liking it and I don't even wanna mess with my skincare routine because it's been working for me. When something works, I don't wanna screw it up, okay? After that step, I go in with Tatcha the Water Cream and this is a moisturizer that I've talked to you guys about a couple of times and this is Honestly, I love it so much. It is a creamy texture. It feels like a thick cream. And when you put it on your skin, you're like, oh, creamy. And then it immediately like changes. It turns into like water. It, I mean, it's literally got the most perfect name. If you go into Sephora, if they have a sample of this, please try it on your skin because I want you to know what I'm talking about. It, again, it like transforms and it really sinks into my skin. Some moisturizers I feel like sit and leave a barrier on top of your skin and aren't like actually moisturizing it. This I feel like actually sinks in and actually plumps and moisturizes my skin. It feels really lovely and I've been really liking it. I've been finishing off this skincare routine with the Ordinary Rose Hip Oil and this is the 100% organic cold pressed rose hip seed oil. And this is inexpensive. It's like eight or 10 or $12, I can't remember. I've been using it every single day. I don't know if you guys can see how far down it is in the bottle. Can you tell? It's like about to right here. I use a drop on my forehead, cheeks, and chin every night after I've done all these other steps because it says on the back here, apply once a day to the face, ideally at bedtime after application of water-based treatments, which is exactly what I've been doing. I do all my water-based treatments first, and then I apply that all over my skin and really massage it into the face. And I've had no active breakouts since starting to use it. If I do have one that seems to wanna come to the surface, I wash my face, I do my whole skincare routine, put all of this on, and the next morning I've woken up and every time I've done this, the breakout is gone or flat. Nothing comes really to the surface. If I do, they're like teeny tiny ones, but before that, my whole forehead was covered in pimples. I was getting cystic breakouts on my chin, especially around that time of the month, which we're at now. So far, so good. With this skincare routine, since I've been doing it, my skin has been leaps and bounds better. I don't feel nearly as dry. I feel like I'm maintaining hydration throughout the day. I just really like it. Whether or not this is the best thing that I could be doing for my skin, I don't know. But as of the meantime, just doing what I feel is working for me, this is that and it's been working for me and I really, really super duper like it. So those are some of the products I've been loving for my skin this month. This is something I didn't think I'd ever be talking about on YouTube and this is a toothbrush. This is the Oral-B Braun electric toothbrush. And you know what? I used to think electric toothbrushes were just a way to get people's money. I did not think that they were actually doing anything different from just regularly brushing your teeth. So I've just been using a regular toothbrush for all these years and being like, you guys wasted your money. That's like a $150 toothbrush. You wasted your money. Then my husband went on Amazon and he bought one. And he was like, I wanna try an electric toothbrush because my dentist suggested it after my cleaning. He said that it's the be the way to get your teeth the cleanest, it's the most gentle on your gums because we both brush our teeth too hard. When I brush my teeth, I scrub the shit out of them. That can actually recede your gums from what I understand and your gums don't come back. So once they're receded, they're receded. And I just, I didn't believe in it. I didn't believe it. I didn't think a toothbrush just being electric and doing the stupid little idiot thing could make that big of a difference. And boy, how wrong was I. My teeth have never felt cleaner. They've never been wider. It gets them cleaner than I could have imagined. It gets into all the nook and crannies. I'm more gentle because I'm not scrubbing my mouth. I'm letting the toothbrush do the work for me. Because when you turn it on, it literally gets all of the gunk out of your mouth. My breath has never been fresher. My teeth have never felt cleaner. I just feel like when I use a regular toothbrush versus this, I just, I can never feel like my mouth is as clean. It's it's honestly so, so good. I never believed in them and now I am flipped completely 180. This guy is actually worth the money. I would tell you that now and feel confident that if you went and bought an electric toothbrush, if you've been skeptical, so was I. All right dry shampoo. So I never really have found a dry shampoo that I actually like. And that is because I feel like with dry shampoo, I feel like they don't really work. That initially they make your hair 
look a little bit better. And then as the day progresses, you just get greasier and greasier. And then you realize like this it didn't actually do anything for my hair. And so I have tried the Bumble and Bumble ones. I've tried ones from the drugstore. I've tried ones from Sephora. I've tried literally so many different dry shampoos. At the end of the day, my hair never looks better. They, it just always feels greasy still, or it just looks greasy even after I use so much of it. And then I remembered a tried and true old time favorite that I remember liking and I was like, I'm gonna try that again, Batiste. Everyone on YouTube used to die over the Batiste dry shampoo. And I was like, okay, is it that good? I can't remember. Yep, it really is. It's the least expensive. I got this at Target. This is the Clean and Light Bare Batiste dry shampoo. And you know what? What I've discovered about this dry shampoo is that it actually makes my hair look clean. Does it feel clean? Not, no. I mean, it's not, nothing's gonna feel as clean as actually hopping in the shower and washing your hair. But if you need a refresher, if your hair is starting to get a little bit greasy, honestly, this, this is the one dry shampoo I've ever used that I feel actually makes an actual difference in my hair. It looks clean after I use this and it stays cleaner looking throughout the day. It really fluffs and rejuvenates my hair. And I don't know, I just feel like it actually works. It does leave a bit of a white cast, but like not in a bad way. I have blonde hair, so it's not that big of a deal to me. But honestly, I'm, I, I can't even say enough good things. I, I'm like an everyday hair washer. I know, I don't even wanna hear the comments of people being like, go longer, you need to give it some time. Don't wash for like a couple weeks. I can't do it. I don't like the feeling. Everyone's different. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know washing your hair every day is not that good, but I just, I need to, I have my whole life. I don't feel clean unless I have clean hair. I can do second day hair with Batiste, but I can't do it with any other dry shampoo. So that is saying something. Another thing that I've been really liking this month are these. These are the Key Australia blue light glasses. Now these are dirty as hell. First of all, these are super cute. I'm gonna have everything linked in the description of this video, but what blue light glasses are, apparently they block out the blue light rays, which can be damaging to the rods and cones in your eyes. And if I'm remembering this correctly, your eyes get damaged from blue light, which come from electronics. It's also emitted in the atmosphere. You need some blue light for your eyes, but you don't need as much as I guess we get because now we're on electronics all the time. You can increase your risk of macular degeneration if I'm understanding correctly. So I got these in the mail. I don't know who sent them. I don't know how I got these. I have no idea. I know I didn't buy them, but I know that they're cute. And I think I like the way that they look a lot and apparently they're benefiting my eyes as well. So I wear them when I'm on the computer. Do I notice a reduction in eye strain? I didn't even notice eye strain before. Do I notice like a reduction in headaches? No, but I don't really get headaches. I get cluster headaches, but they're not the same thing as like eye strain or migraine or anything like that. I notice no benefits from these, but I think that's the thing is that you don't even notice the damage to the rods and cones in your eyes. That's not something that you can like feel happening. It just happens over the course of your life, but they are really cute at the same time. And if they are benefiting me, I do wear them when I'm on the computer and I feel like I look cute in them. And if I'm having a day where I don't wanna wear makeup, pop these suckers on. They do make the world a hint tinted into like a warmth. Makeup wise this month, this might surprise you, but it has become a favorite this month and I've used it at least like eight times. And that is the Morphe and James Charles palette. This palette I did a review on and I will link it up here. And it was a first impressions video. And in that video, I made a few claims and I said that there were a few shades that were difficult to work with. And that also some of the shades performed absolutely perfect and they're so vibrant. And I stand by that review. However, what I have discovered about this palette is that first of all, this is what it looks like in case anyone was wondering. This is what we're looking at here. I'm sure you guys have all seen it. For me, I, I don't think I will ever travel without this palette because it's everything you need in an eyeshadow palette, pretty much. I mean, I needed a cool toned shadow. Boom, you've got one here. Boom, you've got one here. I need warm toned shades. You got this whole middle section here, all these guys up here. Purples, blues, done. Purple, pinks. Greens, you can do everything with this palette. It really is universal. It's such a good eyeshadow palette. Now, there are some shades in here that are difficult to work with. I stand by my original review in that this shade right here and this shade right here, I have worked with them multiple times and I do feel that they are just two of the shades that I feel a little more finicky working with, specifically this one right here, but but, 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 but. I did an eye look and I did like this sunsettiest look with a blue 
lid and then I had purple on the bottom. It was so beautiful. It was honestly probably one of my favorite eye looks I've ever done. And I would love I would love to recreate it for YouTube if you guys would want to see it. I got a lot of requests when I did it on Instagram stories. I was absolutely blown away at the performance of this palette because that was the first time I had, I'm not gonna say used it correctly, but I did a lot of the suggestions that I've seen with this palette and I found the performance of it to exceed my expectations. And what I did was instead of using a big fluffy blending brush to put the shades down and really fluff them out. What I did was I took this brush, which is the Morphe M506, dip into the shade. I think I started off with these guys here. What I did is really pack the shadows on and then blend the edges of each of those out very, very precise. When I treat this palette with more precision than I do some of my other shadow palettes where I just like slap them on, this takes a little bit more finesse to get your eye looks to look perfect. However, when you do, the shadows are so vibrant. Since I have tried this now like eight or 10 times in the last month, a lot of times off camera when I just need like a quick eye look, boom, 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 boom. It's been exceeding my expectations in so many ways. The colors were so vibrant. I mean, Zach was sitting far across the hotel room and he was like, damn bitch. Those red and yellow and orange shades performed so beautifully. I feel like I did use some of this shade that night but I mixed it with this, this, and this to kind of create my own custom color. That evening when I used this palette, I was like, ooh, I could see this becoming one of my favorites because it is so vibrant and beautiful. And in fact, I used it when I went with Hourglass too. I did like a full purple eye look. I did like some oranges and reds and things like that. And then I cut the crease and I did purple on my eyelid. And I had a ton of people requesting that as well. There are a couple of shades in there that I feel like I struggle with a little bit. Majority, I'd say like 99% of the palette is so beautiful. All right, and for foundation, this is probably the one I've reached for the most this month. And that was the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. I actually did a sponsored video with Hourglass. I will link it up here. And I tried this out. It was the second time I'd used it in there. I've probably used this like at least 10 times since then. It is what I've been reaching for when I just want like a quick out the door finish because you need to use so little of this product to get a really beautiful finish and it's been lasting all day on me. I've really been loving this. It's honestly such a good product. I would say if you are interested in trying this, go to Sephora and get a sample of this. I have a feeling that a sample would last you an incredibly long time because literally you need half a pump for your entire face. I've been using like about half to one pump on my face, but it takes so little of this to make a full coverage base that it's just so beautiful. I really, really like this foundation a lot. I've also really been loving the Benefit Roller Liner. I think this is new. Is it new or has this been out forever? The only thing is I feel like this has a bit of a shiny finish to it and I prefer it to be like completely matte. Some people say that this looks so matte on them and then it looks shiny on me. It's like the weirdest thing. I don't know what that is. I just find that when I use a product like this roller liner, I'm able to do my eyeliner in half the time and it doesn't scare me to do it. Sometimes when I'm using like a liner and it's like a pen, you know what I mean? You're holding the end of it and it's like got the little tip. I feel like I'm a little more nervous to do an eyeliner because it can so easily flick out of my hand and like go all crazy. When I use this, I don't find that I struggle to get a good wing. I just kind of flick it right on and it's done. So I've really been liking the Benefit Roller Liner and it does come in a brown version too. So if you're not into like the super stark black, you might like the brown version, but I just find like it, it works so well. It just glides right on. And then liquid eyeshadows. What can I say? I feel like liquid eyeshadow is the only way to ever do shimmery eyeshadow. And I, I, I don't want anyone to question it ever again. Stila takes the cake. All right, I bought a few more Stila liquid eyeshadows. I haven't tried them on camera yet, but I have tried them in general. I didn't wanna necessarily just do like a first impression of it, but these are the Shade Mystery. And I got like four different ones of these and I took the really, really like vibrant purple one. They have like a black base in them. And then they have like a really like shimmery glitter in them as well. This is the one I wore it when I was in LA and it is the shade Spellbound. And this is what it looks like here. So you can see it has like a black base in there. And I don't know if you're supposed to like pat this out or what the point of having it look like, you know what I mean? It's not like mixed up in there. And I feel like that's why you get that. But see, like it has like a black base. And then when you turn it in the light, look at this, bam. 
is even more beautiful in person. I can't even explain it. You can see you want to pat this over, not like a bright eye look, but one where you want it to be like, maybe you have like black all over the lid and you wanted it to be just like a really dark, dark and deep and kind of mysterious looking. Honestly, they are so beautiful, but the shade, I mentioned this in my 2018 favorites video and I cannot get over this and I wore it both times that I went to LA is Wanderlust. And it, I, you can't begin to explain this color in any way other than that it is the most beautiful thing I've ever set my eyes on. Every time Sam has ever seen me wear wearing this, she says, what in the holy mother of God is on your eyes? And I'm like, wanderlust, dude, it's the most beautiful. Oh, I was on Instagram and I saw this Instagram video and this lady had the most beautiful skin I've ever seen in my life. The makeup was absolutely stunning. At the very end, the makeup artist takes a little brush and goes boop, 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 boop. And you're like, oh, what was that stunningness? Read the description? Wanderlust. Stila, you need to come out with 800 colors of this. I would buy all 800 of them. I would display them on my wall. It is the most beautiful formula. It stays on the eyes all day. It's the most glittery. It's so easy to use. Comes in an awesome applicator. I love everything about it and I don't want to talk about it anymore. I think that's everything that I have for my favorites. I didn't have a ton of products this month. I just had a few really solid ones that I wanted to mention to you guys. So let me know what your favorites have been this month. I would love to hear any new makeup that you guys want me to try. Are there any shades of the Stila Magnificent Metals Glitter and Glow liquid eyeshadows that you guys want me to try that I haven't tried yet? I love Bronze Bell. I love Wanderlust is my number one. I have Diamond. Dust, Kitten Karma, and then all these shade mystery ones, but I will try more. And I thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, thank you so much to ThreadUp for sponsoring the beginning portion of this video. And I love the whole like recycling process when it comes to clothes. I think fast fashion is so damaging for the world and being able to reuse and give a second life to clothing is really important to me. And all right, you guys, well, I thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you have not yet, and I will see you at my next video. Bye. This, I'm breathing really hard for just having walked up one flight of stairs. <sighs> what I like to do sometimes too, is I like to take the face, hello, hello, the Tatcha water cream. What? This is something I didn't know if I'd be, everyone on YouTube used to shit their, Everyone, I'm trying not to cuss, okay, because it's a sponsored video. I need a warm tone. It's a little odd because it does have the black base. Never cut me off again. <coughs> oh, this is recording.